Hey guys, it's Lion here with Hobbies of Man. Once again, and here we're going to be doing a comic book review. We're going to be looking at uh, Once in Future Deluxe 1 of 2. Uh, this will cover three different story arcs. Um, but it basically finishes where, like, the first half of the story finishes. So you could call it Sokka 1 if you really wanted to. Although, I don't think that's terminology used for comic books. It's pretty common for manga, though. So, yeah, Once in Future is a kind of... Arthurian retelling of some sort. It's written by Kieran Gillen uh, with art by Dan Mora who knocks it out of the park especially because of the colors of Tamara Bonvillain who is someone that works with Dan Mora basically exclusively as far as I understand it uh, with lettering uh, and typesetting by Ed Dukasher. So great work to all of the team that is in involved with this because they did a phenomenal job with curating this book uh, and honest, well, actually, not the book itself, but the series and the work that went into it is phenomenal. I really do appreciate everything that they did. Uh, this hardcover is really, really cool. It has this uh, register varnish, I think is what it's called, uh, on both sides. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. Uh, it has the questing beast right here, which is cool. And um, this is published by Boom Studios. And that's what the spine looks like. If you're interested, I don't know how the spine will look like for book two, but I'm sure it's going to be still black and orange, and that will be nice. Um, in terms of demographic here, uh, this is basically a teen plus title. It doesn't really get into anything that we consider too adult. Like, there's no, uh, like, explicit content here uh, of the, like, adult sort, right? So it should be fine for teens to read, um, but it definitely has, like, an adult lean because of the violence being so over the top right so yeah and in terms of genres here I, I would basically just call this fantasy if you want to dig more into it i would say that it's an urban fantasy with these kind of like trappings of epic fantasy uh because it is kind of like an arthurian retelling so characters take on arthurian roles and other roles from other stories and so they do end up being kind of epic fantasy style characters in an urban fantasy setting so that works really nicely i really enjoy that in terms of adaptations it does not have one but an animated show of this would be freaking awesome like like the invincible show or maybe more similar to the um uh, what's the D, D show um i reviewed it on the channel what what is it called um, the critical show, uh, the, the critical role show, I can't, I can't remember what, what, what it's called, but that one, like, I think it would work really, really nicely. It would also be a really awesome, like HBO fantasy series, but I'm not sure that this has enough clout, uh, to kind of get someone to actually want to adapt it into a live action show, even though it would be awesome as one, right? So, um, yeah, in terms of rating this a 5 out of 5, I found this book to be phenomenal, super enjoyable, and uh, some of the best stuff that I read in comic books at the end of last year, sadly, couldn't fit into my 2023 list, so it's definitely going to go on my 2024 list uh, for, uh, you know, December this year. So, yeah, and the premise here is that there's this guy, his name is Duncan, who finds out about the truth of his family, who are basically monster hunters and they've been monster hunters for a long time uh and he was basically uh protected in such a way that he knew nothing about his family uh in order to fulfill this arthurian role just in case right um and so he has to join his grandmother in fighting against king arthur uh who has been recently rewoken by uh, another person in their family and so it's a really interesting family story but also a really interesting story that kind of has the fate of England in the world, um, you know, in, in hanging in the balance, right? Perilously at, at the edge, possibly falling over. And it's really great. I really like this book a lot. So in terms of plotline here, it opens up on this British archaeologist finding a scabbard. Uh, then it introduces Duncan and Bridget, who are two characters that are going to be very important. Duncan, of course, is the main character. Uh, it shows the questing beast. Um, and then the start of the story from there, right? And in this case, the story means like the Arthurian legend story, not necessarily the story as in the comic book, right? Um, then um, they journey to Arthur's tomb, the, the bad guys, the people that stole the scabbard at the beginning of the story. Uh, he awakens 
uh, he knights a Galahad, uh, then starts the Grail quest, right? Um, then Duncan and his family uh, manage to thwart this attempt, uh, thwart this first plan, which is basically the end of the first arc. Merlin arises, uh, and he starts story two. Uh, this leads to Galahad being zombified, uh, a fight with Duncan between the two of them, and then the introduction of Beowulf. And Beowulf is a badass. He looks so awesome in this. And it reminds me a lot of Rogue Son, actually. Like, I would love to see Rogue Son drawn by Dan Mora thanks to this book. Like, I think it would be awesome to have that kind of, like, crossover between the two. Uh, but who knows? Uh, and so uh, there's a battle with Arthur now. Then Merlin stops the battle. Elaine turns into Nimue, or N Nimue, I guess is how you say that name, uh, who eventually will betray uh, uh, Merlin. Beowulf fights Duncan, and then the grandma fights Grendel, who in this case is this kind of like Hulk creature. Um, I thought Grendel was supposed to be a dragon, but I might be wrong. Um, and then it sets up a political issue for the story that leads to story four, but we don't get to that story yet because story three starts here. Uh, they fight Grendel's mom, uh, and then, oh, sorry. They fight Grendel's mom, and then story three starts right afterwards. And story three starts with Bors, uh, enters the Green Knight. Uh, there is a, a really interesting portion of the story here where a character, um, but basically people can't take on more than one role in, in certain ways, because that would cause like the stories to pull them apart, right? Like they can't fulfill two different uh, destinies to, to, to kind of word it in a way, right? And so a character that wasn't supposed to be involved has to take on the role of, uh, what, who is it, Gawain, uh, and stand against the Green Knight. And though um, it, it works out, I'm curious to see how it's gonna pay off later because it doesn't really pay off yet. They go and find Lancelot, who is this French water knight, and it's very really cool. I really like it. Um, and then they get into that story to get into the other world. Uh, it sets up Beowulf versus the dragon, which is going to be like the climax of the second story um, in the third story, which is really confusing, I know, but it works out really well. It's not very confusing when you're reading it. It, it just, like, it's woven so well. Karen Gillan does a great job with Once and Future, and uh, I really love it. So, um, yeah, then... Basically, Merlin tricks everyone, and uh, the start of the the end of the book starts the fourth story, which is when the stories basically collide and enter the real world. And I'm curious to see where that's going to go, and I can't wait to get the second book here because this was awesome. It was so so great. So that's a plot line. I didn't really give away too many parts. Like I gave you general ideas, but not how everything actually happened. So don't don't feel like I spoiled this for you because I mean I did to an extent. Um, but not so much that you won't enjoy reading this when you read it yourself, right? So, yeah. Uh, in terms of characters, we get a lot of Arthurian characters, uh, except Morgan Le Fay, and I'm not sure why that is. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm confused here, and Morgan Le Fay doesn't show up in the actual Death of Arthur story, and is only an addition to Merlin's side of, 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 of things later on. I'm not really sure. I don't think so, um, but I can see that being the case, right? Um we get introduced to Duncan, who basically plays, plays the role of Percival. Uh, Galahad, who happens to be related to Duncan in some way. And he plays a different role. Bridget is uh, Duncan's grandmother. Rose is Duncan's girlfriend. And Mary is another character that is really important, who happens to also go by the name Elaine. And then later, Nimue, or N Numie. And uh, overall, the characters are really complex. There's a lot of family drama in this story that provides a really nice counterpoint to the fantasy issues, right? So, like, the, the family problem is the core, and this core uh, family issue expands into the other world fantasy stuff, and it works really, really nicely. I like it a lot. They did a great job with the characters. World-building-wise, um, it's pretty unclear how everything happens, uh, but it basically eventually just happens. Uh, Bridget managed to kill off all of the fantasy creatures that ever existed, um, but someone decided to return uh, Arthur to the real world because they felt like they needed to change Britain. And so they did, and this unleashes a lot of issues, right? And so this is where everything comes from. But it's basically like an ink heart or a 
once in a like once in uh, once upon a time type situation where there's a region or a place where like stories just happen to be real and this leads to issues when it like expands outside of that region right so um yeah it's pretty good i i enjoy the world building here but i i would like it to be more clear later on um so yeah and in terms of artwork and fan service there's bas basically no fan service in the sense that there's no like adult content um but the artwork is phenomenal let me see if i can find one of the best uh bits of uh art here this page right here it looks so great this is when arthur reawakens and it's so awesome it just looks amazing like throughout this there's just sun such phenomenal awesome like drawings right here's grendel that almost looks like a spawn villain or like venom let's see if i can find merlin there's merlin right there and just overall really great stuff i really like the artwork here like i said not really too much fan service but the character designs are phenomenal. I love them. The color, the colors are really, really great. They're not exactly your standard colors. They're very like purple and green and orange, and it works really, really nicely. It's really, really good looking. Ratings wise, a five out of five. It's so, so good. I think I just like Arthurian retelling comic books because I love Camelot Three Thousand and I love Once in Future. And um, if there's any more out there, let me know down in the comments so I can read them and and, and see if it's true that I like Arthurian uh, retelling comic books because I think I do. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Wanted Future. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys very much for watching and see you guys later.